rather than just getting over the the shock exit uh, of Dan Ashworth. And if you've not seen my reaction video to that, it was the one before this. Uh, and someone in the comments has just reminded me it was Ashworth that wanted Southgate. And I actually feel a little bit better about it all now. But either way, I'm sure speculation is going to rumble on about that. And I'm sure we'll be talking about it tomorrow at some point as we start to look ahead to who the new sporting director is going to be. But I still want to talk about last night. And there's obviously still five things to go over for last night. And I think we start with errors. Um, we seem like we are absolute specialists at the moment in making things easy for our opposition. We had um, a sloppy pass from Bruno. Uh, we had a comical error from Onana, Sunday League level stuff. We had Martinez just watching a ball go in. Errors. Um Poor execution of simple actions. The sort of stuff that professional Manchester United players should not be making. Uh, no commitment to consistency. Very sloppy, very complacent. The Premier League today is not the league that gives teams freebies because of the intensity of it. And I don't necessarily think the quality of the Premier League is the highest it's ever been. I actually think it's in a... a I think we're in a poor era of football because I think the... The academy system has created robotic footballers and taken a lot of that flair and, and magic out of, of players. But what they are is athletes, um, probably as fit as they've ever been. And certainly with that fitness comes a level of, of speed and intensity that hasn't really... I was going to say hasn't really been there. It has been there. That would be a lie. It, it's more... Um, it's just more prevalent. And because of that... Errors are pounced upon more than they ever were. Um, and it's almost become an, an error game. Like, you win on... Because everyone's this <clears throat> homogenised sort of central midfielder academy player that's got a good technical ability, you don't get the flair players that are going to... <clears throat> excuse me. Just create out of nothing, out of just a, a sheer moment of magic. That's not really in the game anymore. So errors become this real big thing. And you know, we made a, a bucket full yesterday, hence the loss. Number two, uh, no creative spark. Outside of Bruno and Ahmad uh, occasionally, who else is creating chances in this team? We look completely devoid of options against a low block. Players are freestyling, getting in each other's way. Um, there's a lack of end product. You know, there's a lack of quality in the forward areas. You know, I've been speaking about the lack of quality and ability in the forward line for months. And some people have agreed and some people have disagreed. No one's changing my mind on this. You know, could they develop? Yeah, they could. But right now, they're not good enough. And I don't know how many of them could end up being good enough. You know... Uh, it's just not good enough. That, that forward line is not a forward line that competes for the biggest trophies in football, ever. It, you know, you can go back to any... Like, this last decade of underachievement for Manchester United, almost any season, but I like the last couple, almost any season you can just pull out a selection of United's forward line and go, yeah, that was better than this. Because it was. You know, whether it was an aging Rooney or an aging Zlatan or an aging Ronaldo, like there's been, or Cavani, you know, there's been better talent at our disposal. You know, look at what David Moyes was working with. Jesus. It was better. It was just significantly better. So what we've got now has been an absolute quality erosion in the football team. And that's down to lots of recruitment and that's down to Woodward and the Glazers, etc. And that's what Ineos have to reverse the trend of. And it's not going to be easy. And it's not going to be quick. But it needs doing. It does need doing. Uh, three, yeah, mentality issue. United aren't winning second balls. Um, or 50-50s, actually. There seems to be a lingering mentality or attitude issue at the club. And there's some good characters in this team. Um, I think Jamie Redknapp, it might have been, or, or Phil Jones on the on the TV were, were highlighting who's organising at set plays here. Who's organising? You know, who's um, getting round people and saying, right, here, look at blah blah blah. The, the 
the players aren't taking enough accountability for each other. You know, that has to be taken into account when we're looking at signings. There has to be more leaders. There has to be someone who, you know, Bruno wears the armband. And I think, you know, there's... I've spoken about this a couple of times. I think because Bruno has a tendency to whine, people think that makes him an unsuitable captain. I think from a, an ability point of view, he's a good captain. And from giving a shit and working hard point of view, he's a captain. People generally want their captains to be a little bit more stoic. And I think that's why some people don't want Bruno Fernandes as captain. And again, I'm not advocating for that. I think he's the only obvious choice that you've got. And he's not done anything wrong to, to strip him of that captaincy. There isn't the obvious... I go back to Roy Keane always because Roy Keane was the, the benchmark of what a captain should be and it's probably unrealistic to expect anybody to, to, to come up to that standard. But, you know, even Gary Neville, Vidic, Rio, or even earlier than that, Robbo, Bruce, Cantona, there was standards that were set at a football club and you just go, who's now asking for them standards on the pitch and at training who who is doing that and who is doing that in a forceful manner because i don't know if it is getting done and i, I think that yes the game has changed but it's still the it's still got the same requirements for success that it always has uh, and that's what's missing martinez martinez has had I think the kindest way I could say it is an inconsistent season since his injury. He hasn't looked um, himself. On the ball, the quality is still there, but defensively, I think he's been inconsistent. Because I've seen him do some stuff that was very good, but I've seen him do some stuff where I go, huh, thought he would have got to that, or I thought he would have dealt with that. He was obviously too small to deal with Milenkovic for the first goal. Because he doesn't quite look physically as at it as he has done, he doesn't look like he can cover that wide channel area when he gets dragged out uh, as effective. Now, I don't think it's the issue that some are making it out. As On one hand, you've got Yoro on the other side who can deal with it very well because of the physical attributes that he's got. I think Martinez relies on reading of the game a hell of a lot better and his aggression. And the way Amarim set up this defence, and you could sort of see it with both Martinez and the, some of the mistakes that you saw Johnny Evans making in that first game, I think he likes one of the centre-halves to go and push and press. I think Martinez could easily be that guy. But the moment, he's putting in pretty ordinary performances. I think as soon as Yoro is fit to start, he might benefit from a couple of weeks out of the team. Because... A couple of weeks out of the team to work on mobility, flexibility, fitness, whatever it needs to be. Because a fit, physically fit Martinez is such an asset to a team on and off the ball. And also, we're talking about leadership. You don't want to lose that level of leadership. He's one of the few that I could absolutely guarantee is holding people account and to a standard. But he isn't performing consistently well enough at the moment. So you've got to figure out how we... Like, I think since he's been at United, he's been played through injuries, he's been overplayed, and I, I think you know, there has to be a, a point where you say, this dude needs a break and a bit of an extended... I'm not talking like miss this game. I'm talking about what Fergie used to do. Send him off to go and get a bit of sun on the back. Have a think about stuff. Get fit. And then finally, Amarim. <laughs> cool heads must prevail, right? Um, there's obviously a hell of a lot of learning that needs to happen for him, and there's probably a hell of a lot of learning that is happening. First and foremost, you and your set piece coach need, needs to sit down and have a chat because what I'm seeing at set plays at the moment has to change. It just has to change. Now, I don't think this is a Premier League-specific thing. I don't think it's massively different to the Portuguese League. But it has to change. Whatever ideas you had coming in, rip them up, throw them away, get some fucking new ones. Because what's going on at set plays at the moment is embarrassing. Um, fi figure out who you think your best asset in the air is. Let them be free and let them go fucking muller whatever it is they need to get on. Um, to start with, the the way we're zonal 
entirely like a whole fucking squad of terracotta statues just waiting for the opposition to flood through us and attack us is not working. It is not working. Set pieces have to improve. We have been bullied on set pieces by Arsenal and by Forest. Uh, at times in games when it really would have mattered if we had uh, been resolute and held firm with that. <clears throat> Fix that, because you know, that you're know, not everything you can, you can. You're not going to just turn this United forward line in, into the fucking, you know, 2008 Manchester United. Oh shit, we just scored 100 goals. Nice. You're not going to do that, but you can get better at set plays in a week on the training ground. You can. You absolutely can. It's probably one of the biggest wins that you can do on the training ground. So let's fucking do that, shall we? Anyway. As always, give us your thoughts in the comments below. And if you made it this far, hit like, hit subscribe. And we are relaunching Patreon and YouTube memberships. If you saw the Dan Ashworth video, I did speak about that in the Dan Ashworth video. Um, so if you'd like to get involved in either YouTube memberships, click the join button below. Uh, and if you'd like to get involved in Patreon, it's more or less the same thing. Um, then there's a link for that in the description as well. And uh, I did speak about it last night in the review, but I'm going to be doing some iconic match watch alongs uh I'll, I'll be picking some of the best matches in united's history and i'll be i'll be because i'm putting it on youtube membership and on patreon i'll be able to actually show the game and we'll edit it down into like 10 minutes of the best bits and we'll talk about the fashion the culture what i was up to at the time and if we get enough in and it's successful i will get some of the people that was involved in those games to, to come and join me for the watch along as well because i'm lucky enough to to have a handful of uh access to those people i did text a few last night and said listen i'm thinking about doing this would you be interested and everyone come back and said yes i was like good idea so join the membership join the patreon we hit a certain number and i will i'm gonna i'm gonna roll out i've got like five i would like to do at the moment once i've done those i will start bringing in some of the legends to come and join me as well but uh i'm really looking forward to doing them if you're interested hit join become a youtube member or if you prefer it to go on Patreon, then head over to Patreon where the link is in the description. Uh, you're going to get early access to things like IRL Fest and all that shit as well. So if you're interested, help support the channel, help us make bigger, better content. And I'll see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news, as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.